and I believe that we are live now. Um, so yes, I would, I would like to uh, welcome Juliet Buchan to our weekly uh, little chat session that we've done and has grown every week. So thank you very much for joining us, Juliet. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to actually uh, be, be here tonight and being listened to, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. I'm always surprised how many uh, people tune in and it's, it's nice. It's, it's really a nice uh, moment in the whiskey, you know, a nice little piece of the whiskey fabric of people, you know, wanting, always want to hear what people have to say about the whiskeys that they love. Um, yeah, quite right. It's funny, I, you know, I, 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 was, I purposely didn't say this to you beforehand because I was thinking about this. It's, it's funny that the first time I met you was a year ago, more than a year ago at, at the, the, in Nuremberg. Yeah, um, and it that doesn't seem like a year to me at all. And I keep getting, you know, Facebook posts uh, memories of like a year ago, a year ago. I said, hey, that was last week. Yeah, <laughs> that that was actually the last show I attended uh, after Nuremberg. Just went briefly to Belgium and then came back, and that was that was it. Haven't left since. So I've been in Scotland for yeah, a year nonstop. It's the first time in my life where I'm stuck somewhere for so long. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's the last trip I took, the, the last flight I took. When, when we came here, we drove across the country here. So, um, and uh, I'm eager to get back. That was, yeah. but that was, it was quite an event. That was, it, I mean, I remember everyone was talking about it. They, they were talking about COVID at the event. You know, I think some of the distilleries had kind of backed out at the last minute and it was sort of hanging in the air. It was maybe going to be a thing. Maybe actually you're right. It was it was this uh, uncertainty, but it was it was far away. It wasn't you know it wasn't us. It was uh, it was coming, but you know it wouldn't touch us. And then right. very quickly, very quickly, it just all happened, um, and you knew you wouldn't escape it. But yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I, when I when I flew home, I flew from Frankfurt to Helsinki, and then Helsinki over the top of the world to LA, which I was very excited about. Uh, not that I got out on the North Pole, but it was exciting just to go over it. And I remember being in the Helsinki airport and I saw maybe four or five people with masks. You know, and now it's, it's just the whole world yeah. is so different, you know? And, um, but anyway, on happier notes, <laughs> I, I would love, if you could, if you, I, I'm sure that people who are tuning in know, but I would love to, uh, for you to tell us a little bit about, you know, exactly what you do and the Glen Allocky and, what you your 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 career? Yeah, sure. Well, I just uh, introduce myself very briefly. Um, first of all, I'm French. So if you wonder where these wonderful accents come from, it's uh, it's a French dubbed Scottish accent. So I moved to Scotland about uh, twenty years ago, and just fell in love with with the country, with the people, and then ultimately with with whiskey as well, because whiskey is very much part of of Scotland. Uh, like Jim McEwen would say, you know, it's a blood of Scotland. So I started working in, in Scotch whiskey industry uh, 14 years ago now, over 14 years ago, and initially for Gordon MacPhail. And then the last two years, I joined uh, the fantastic journey that Glen Allachy is taking. So I'm uh, the European sales manager for Glen Allachy. And uh, I look about sales in, in, in Europe and uh, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's been great. It's been absolutely great in the last two years. It's, I mean, Glen Allocky has just exploded in the last couple of years, uh, rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they started, well, the new ownership under Billy Walker um, started in October 2017. So as a bit over three years, and the first product was launched in, in July 2018. Well, not quite the first product because you had the 50th anniversary, but the, the core range, uh, July 2018. So it's a very new venture. It's a, it's a new journey. And, and you're right, in the three years, we've done a lot of work. And now people are talking about it. Uh, everybody, well, or everybody should know about Glenarchy if you if you're in the know. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's been fantastic. So it's nonstop. It's moving all the time, and even you know last year with with COVID and the slowdown, uh, we've been very busy. Um, 
I think it was David Allen, who's the the sales manager at uh, Springbank, said mm -hmm. that his job should not be sales manager; it should be um, head of telling stores how that they can't have as much whiskey as they want, <laughs> because it's yeah. more like it, 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 they're not pushing it; they're they're pulling it. They're you know, it's it's everything they can produce, they sell, and I'm sure the same is true for you guys now. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we we had stock challenges. Um, we couldn't produce enough. I mean, we've got the stock. It's it's in at the distillery. It's in the the cask. But we rely on a, a bottling hall, um, which is a third party. And again, due to COVID, you know, they had their own challenges. So they had to run on a skeleton team, and and the the, the bottling were postponed and so on. So that was difficult, you know, to try to actually get enough stock. To, to to push through to well to Europe and to the rest of the world to the states as well so everywhere now we, we, we have new you know new distributors and new markets um, we also now trying to get well not even trying we're getting into um, Latin America South America so yeah it's 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 been good um, can can you tell me a little bit about I, I know that you guys have started doing a lot of single cask releases or small batch releases, especially in Germany. And uh, can you, you know, can you tell me a little bit about some of those and 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 the sort of the thinking behind that? Yeah, well, thinking behind behind that is is just a demand. Everybody wanted to have a single cask, and maybe, to be honest with you, maybe we've done a bit too much of that. So now we're trying to. To slow down a bit of the single cast, we're here really to push the core range. Uh, we have our own limited edition, uh, the wood finishes, the oak edition that we did in uh, October last year was very fantastic, you know, 12 years old, but different virgin oak finish. So you had a, a French oak, you had the um, chinkapin oak, which is fr from uh, the Ozark Mountains, and you had a Spanish oak. So we've got a lot of limited editions of our own, and the single cask is just to supplement it and to keep it interesting. So if we've got demand, you know, we'll try, we'll try to supply, we'll try to do something for a retailer of for market and so on. I'm um, I'm always interested in you know. Uh, Billy Walker seems, you know, chief among so many people in whiskey, they're relentless experimenters. And it seems like the single cask is a great way to sort of do, well, we can do this and this and this. And, and I, I'm always curious if distilleries use that as a sort of um, a trial balloon, you know, will sort of the, which ones of these turned out the best. And then you may think about incorporating one or the other into the core range eventually, or is yeah. it all just always going to be? No, you, you're right about Billy. I mean, Billy is, uh, he likes experimenting. He likes playing with cask. Cask is his domain. Um, is you know we've got a really wow. nice new spirit, and and that's the reason why he, he purchased Glenarchy because he's got a strong, rich spirit, and he knew that the spirit could withstand, withhold uh, strong cask, and and that's his thing. You know he likes really rich whiskey, strong influence of the cask. Um, different, different wine, different, well, sherry, sherry, he loves sherry, he loves virgin oak, um, you know, he, he likes colors and taste, so it's very interesting to see what he does. You, you've got different, well, you, you came to Glamalaki, so you've seen the cask compound and, and all this cask waiting to be filled, uh, and, and you look and you've got the PX, the Oloroso, the Masala, the Madeira, the Sauté, and the, the, Burgundy wine, Napa Valley. I mean, it's, there's so many, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's really good. It's really good to to see that. I mean, I've discovered a lot about influences of different uh, uh, wines and 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 casks. Someone, I, I I tried to look really hard through my notes to find out who told me this story, but I could not find it. But I remember the story. So, uh, <laughs> someone told me that you know a story about um, Billy at. I want to say it was Glen Glasso, but it was one of the, the three other distilleries mm -hmm. that he heard about a, a cask type of, of a very obscure Ukrainian wine. And then a, a couple of days later had people fly there to find out about this cask, you know, that it was this sort of, <laughs> there's another one, find this and find this. And 
Um, it's, yeah, it's I wouldn't be surprised. Pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny when the, when we were shooting at Glen Alicky, uh, I between we weren't filming at the time. We were he and I were just talking while they were setting up the camera and lights. And I had asked him. He was talking about the um, Missouri oak, and and I and I asked him about Gariana oak, uh, which there's a distillery in Seattle here called Westland. Uh, it's a mm -hmm. single malt American, and and they do a release every year. This uh, whiskey that's aged entirely in this very rare type of oak called Gariana oak, and I think that the reason no one ever uses it is it's one of the slowest growing oaks in the world. So it's, it's really not sustainable. So they only do a very, very tiny yeah. amount of it every year. And I, and I asked him about it. And a few minutes later, I saw him take a piece of paper out of his pocket and write Gary on Oak. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm expecting a couple of years from now to hear that there's a Glen Alecky in Gary on Oak. You never I'm know. It, it, <laughs> you know, it surprises, Billy surprises everybody. So, so you're right. You, you think you know what's happening and then suddenly there's a new release or uh, something coming up and so it's it's you know it's a bit like an artist for me it, it, it paints with many colors so different type cask and 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 it does his own bit and i think until really the picture is finished you never know what's coming out of it if that makes sense so it's like a kid in a candy shop uh, playing with his, his cask and tasting and nosing and, and blending it all together until he's got what he's looking for. So it's a, it's a lot of knowledge, it's a lot of um, expertise. And it's got nearly 50 years of, of experience behind him in the industry. So that is, is fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's something else. And you know, there, do you know, um, there's a Canadian writer, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Do you know him by any chance? No. Nope. Well, he wrote a book a few years ago, well, probably 10 years ago now called Blink. And it was about people who are so good at something that they're better at doing it in a blink of an eye than they are about thinking about it. They actually get in their own way when they think about it. And they just, it's, it's about people who are such masters of what they do mm -hmm. that, that they kind of can exist in this zone. And I, and I really just in my research about Billy before we shot there and stuff, I just really felt like he was sort of had that knowledge of, of wood and the biochemistry of wood and, and, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, spirit relationship. Yeah. Well, he's, he started as a chemist, so he's got the, the chemical background. He understands, you know, yeah. not just the flavors, but really what comes out of the wood and, and the interaction with the spirit and so on. So it's it's a science behind it as well. And then obviously with the whiskey, it will have gained a lot of experience on, on the flavor and what works, what doesn't work. Um, yeah, it's it's something you can't learn in, in a couple of years. It's, it's a lifetime ach achievement. Yeah, and you know what, what I found interesting for me personally when we're making the film is, you know, we spent so much time with Jim McEwen and, and, and both Jim and Billy come at this from completely different worlds. You know, Billy comes in from academia and Jim has worked in distillery since he was, well, like 10 <laughs> to hear him tell it. <laughs> yeah, instead um, of going to school. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there's a point where those two things kind of meet in the middle where you've just, you know, I'm sure that there's things that, Billy knows that Jim doesn't know, but he doesn't need to know. Like there's just a sort of, you know, we asked a lot of people, including Billy about, you know, art versus the science. And, and I think the, the consensus was that it, it's, the, it's both of them. They, they, the mm -hmm. roads cross at some, they might go here and then eventually they cross. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's fascinating to actually see him work and, and um, blend his product and, and yeah. So. Um, it's it's interesting uh, to see you know Glenallachie um, really kind of come into its own um, and come out from its. I don't think it's. It would have been easy for for Billy if he wanted to to make a, a sort of a, a mimic of Glendronic or a mimic of Ben Riek or something, you know. And, but it, this is just completely its own animal. It's just it's it's become its own thing. I mean, clearly you know Billy is a, is fond of of sherry, sherry cask finishes, uh, you know, but but it's still completely different whiskey and, and it, it's kind of been exciting to sort of experience them as they come out. Yeah, I think like Glenarchy's got its own identity uh, and it's a different new spirit from the start. So yeah, um, for sure, yeah. You know, um, but I think he, he still 
maybe wants to take a direction of, of heavily sherried, as you say, that's what he likes, but without losing the new spirit. So the new spirit of Glenalaki or the, the DNA of Glenalaki is very much on the butterscotch and the, the orange. There's always a bit of orange zest in behind and sometimes a bit of eucalyptus. So it's got the richness, but also a really nice fresh note uh, in it. So the skill is also to try to use strong cask, but not to actually, um, you know, forget about the DNA and you still need to feel the, the DNA of the spirit underneath. So it's how you balance that with the cask. Yeah. And yeah, and the spirit is clearly very different, especially from Glendronic, you know, that the, the, there is that, you know, I think Glendronic is a sort of a more Christmassy whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and there is that, that sort of, the fresh notes that are sort of more summary notes in the Glen Alecky. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, saying that we, we also, since Billy took over the distillery, so October 2017 uh, from, from Pernod Ricard, the, the production, the distillations changed slightly. So as we go and as we grow as a company, you'll see changes in the spirit itself. So for example, we, first of all, we, we've reduced volume and that's very very important the, the distillery is able to produce got capacity for over four million liter of pure alcohol and at the moment we do around five hundred thousand per year so we've totally cut down the production the volume it's not about making as much as we can it's making as as best as we can and big difference as well is the fermentation time so we've extended the fermentation to 160 hours. And that's a very, very long fermentation. That's very long, yeah. yeah. I, well, as far as I know, it's the longest in the industry, but uh, I don't know everything. So it could be that somebody's doing as many hours or, or longer. And what it brings is actually a secondary fermentation and it developed characteristic, more fruity aromas, more esters. So that will influence you know, the new spirit. Um, the distillation itself as well has been slowed down. So we are slightly changing and making the, the new spirit more complex than it's ever been at Glenalaki. So you'll see as we evolve, you also see that the new spirit coming, coming out. You know, it, that's, that's kind of refreshing though to hear that because it's an industry that for so long was obsessed with consistency. You know, consistency at all costs, chill, you know, uh, E150 was mm -hmm. all about consistency, you know, uh, chill filtering was all, you know, and, and it was, I, I think that the most interesting distilleries are all the ones that aren't worried about consistent, the consistency they want is consistency of quality, not identical, yeah. identical you know. Um, but that's because the consumer changed. I think the consumer, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they wanted consistency. They had, you know, they found the whiskey they liked and they mm -hmm. wanted to have the same over and over and over again. Nowadays, the consumer is really looking for something kind of different every time as well. Um, and that, that is a challenge for the industry in a way because you always have to come up with something new. I mean, when you go to a show, I, I remember, especially in, in previous role, where the first, uh, the first question on the show would be, so what's new? And you think, well, we, we've got a core range that we want to, to keep producing because we really believe in that. But actually, the consumer wants something new. They want the next thing because they've already tasted, you know, the 10-year-old, the 12-year-old, the 15. So it's what's new, what's new, what's new. So the consumer is much more looking at um, new taste and, and maybe something that, you know, their friend hasn't tasted so it's also this need of look at what I've got, look at what I bought, and you haven't got it. Yeah, there is a real one-upsmanship <laughs> in that in that yeah. realm. Yeah. So I'm 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 drinking a, a dram of the the twelve year old right now. Um, yeah, it's, I, I like it's, the twelve. I think the twelve is is, uh, is is round. It's easy. It's you know. A very affordable drink, uh, very easy to drink, but at the same time full of flavor. Yeah, it is, it, and it's it, the mouthfeel on it is amazing for a twelve-year-old whiskey. It's mm -hmm. uh, I really like it a lot. I always have a bottle of it, always. 
um, this is the end of this bottle. But like I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to California in a couple of days where there's more waiting for me there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm um, sure. But yeah, no, 12 the, years uh, old is one of the best seller. Uh, definitely the oh, 12 sure. and 15. And, uh, but, but the 12 for its affordability as well, it's, it's a great value for money. Um, the other day I was drinking a, uh, well, I have still the one here. It, this is a, a um, current <laughs> classic laddie. This is yeah, the- I, I don't know the bottle. A, I don't recognize the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a current release of uh, classic laddie. Um, yeah, 20, uh, July 29th, 2020. So, you know, this is bottled pretty recently. And then I had a bottle, a little bit left in a bottle that was from Jim McEwen era. So it was, you know, six year bottled six years ago, and I was able to drink the dram side by side, and they were they're not identical. They're they're close. I mean, you know, they're they're certainly um, they're siblings, but they're not identical twins. And and I I like that. I don't I don't I'm not afraid of that at all. You know, um, as a, as a consumer, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it'll, a, it'll be yeah. Sorry, it it's a it's a living product. Yeah. It's you you can't you can't make it totally identical. I don't think. Um, because it's, it's yeah, yeah it, it's man-made. It depends on seasons, depends on, on, on the barley this year. It depends, on, it depends on so many factors. You can never replicate the same whiskey year and year on. I, well, I don't think, but it's the same for, same for wine. It's the same for cheese. It's the same for everything. Sorry, I've got my phone and the news coming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, that's what is fascinating as well about about whiskey in general it's it's never quite the same and you've got this diversity of aromas so we should celebrate that the difference of, of all the aromas and even between a bottling of, of the same whiskey so yeah and and the it being open to that is so it keeps it exciting it, you know why I, I i would never want it to be it would get boring if it was the same i, I absolutely the exact same all the time you know just i just uh it's funny i i i'm i, I appreciate beer a lot as well and um there's an app for your phone called untapped where you keep track of every beer you drink right. and i find it it's a little bit of a trap <laughs> in that because of that i have friends that i compete with on there and i don't want to compete it's drinking beer i don't want to you know, but i i'm always trying to do the new beer not the one i really love Right. And I don't know why it's, it goes, it, it takes that desire to try new things, but it takes it to such an extreme that it sort of almost turns on itself. I don't, I don't do it with whiskey on purpose because I don't want to get stuck where I always have to try a different one, a different one. I just love the ones I love and yeah. I'll try new ones, but not, I don't want to feel the need to. Um, one of the things that, you know, I, that I would like to talk to you about is what, are the opportunities and the challenges of, you know, this was with the interesting thing about Glen Allocky the last few years is you weren't creating a brand out of nothing. You were sort of reinventing a brand and, and putting it front and center, elevating the brand, you know, because, um, you know, I think it's safe to say it was something of an overlooked uh, whiskey before. And, you know, now it's, it's not just new ownership. That would be easy. This is a completely new yeah. Glen Allocky. Yeah, well, it's... Um, I mean, for, for many years, for nearly 50 years, it was, it was the, the only purpose of Garnalaki was to produce single malt for the blend purpose, for the blend industry. So uh, it, it was the major component of Clan Campbell, uh, some Shivash Regal and, and, and so on. So it, it had a different, it had a different purpose and it wasn't treated as a single malt on its own. And that's where, when, when Billy took over, um, he wanted, well, he wanted a distillery because he wasn't quite, you know, quite finished within the whiskey industry after selling Ben Riak, Glen Ronak, Glen Glasso. Um, he just wanted to continue. He's got so much more to give. So he was looking for a distillery where he would have had uh, some, some really rich new spirit whiskey and we talked about that something with stock as well was important for him to have good stock and that's because at the age he is you know unfortunately you can't just suddenly look at 10 years 20 years 30 years ahead he, he just wanted to to keep the, gr the ground running straight away with 
a new brand. So one of the criteria as well was to have a distillery with a blank canvas. So good spirit, but which the, the, the name wasn't really known and, and Glenelg actually offered all of that. Uh, and, and that was uh, the ambition of Billy to launch a new brand to revive. Well, it's not even revive because it wasn't dead, but it was in, right. in the shade, it was in the shadow. So it was suddenly taking Glenalaki out of the shadow and to put it on its own, to put it in the light and say, look how great I am on my own. That's really great. That's, that's so, uh, I, I love hearing that. And, and you put it so beautifully because I, 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 you know, I, I think that's one of the great things that, one of the things um, Adam Hannett said to us about Brooklady when, when they took over, they had all this aging stock. And as soon as they re-racked it in new casks, they realized they had this amazing, mm. the, the, not the stuff they distilled. This is before they ever got to distilling. This was stuff that they had inherited and it was already great. And it just, no one ever appreciated it. It was just there for the, it needed to be polished. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was a diamond. I, I think it's exactly that. It's, it's you know, the stock we, we inherited, we didn't ha inherit, we had to pay for it. But um, w when Billy purchased a distillery, stock came with it that was uh that was a the deal made and and you're right the stock was great but it had some of them had to be put in another direction and a bit of tlc a bit of right you, you're good but you could be even better you know it's like putting somebody in a new dress you might have a wonderful <laughs> woman um and, and suddenly you put her in a new dress and wow you know shines uh, it's so it's a bit like this. It's um, yeah, try to to look at all the casks and decide what direction they are going to take. So there's an extensive re-racking program at Glenarchy, um, and and we, we we look at that, and that's really what Billy does most of the time when it comes up at the distillery is looking at the cask, deciding where they're going to end up and what the, he's going to do with it. Um, so you know, I'm talking about the distillery. We we have. Uh, the company is quite a small company in terms of, of staff. We are 21, I think, today, and uh, on two sites. So you have the distillery, which is about 10 people, and then you have the, the head office in Codebridge, uh, so next to Glasgow, and that's another 11 people. So I have the, the, the chance, the luck, luxury, I would call it luxury, to actually be based at the distillery, uh, because that's where I, I live. I live in Space Side. And, and it's lovely to actually have the role I have as sales, but also be so close to the product. So I see, I see the distillery, you know, every day. I, I see the guys every day. I can, I can follow. I can, I can go and see the cask if I want. I mean, it's, it's really nice. Yeah, that would be, that would be really lovely. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I loved, when we were there, I loved that Billy had, I don't know what you guys call it, but the sort of small warehouse where there was there was sort of his play his playroom where there was kind of you know a couple lots of different casks that were one-offs yeah that, that's a, a, a new dunnage warehouse you're talking about then yeah mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah. so he's got um, yeah he's got some of this uh, favorite cask over there and then he's got his uh, his retreat as he calls it so billy's retreat which is his lab uh, with all the samples and and so on and that's, is that at the distillery or is that in Glasgow? Yeah, yeah, it's at the distillery. Oh, okay. We didn't so see that. So maybe you missed then. the lab. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we interviewed him twice when, that day in the still house and then in the dunnage. Right. Um, I always tell people this story that when we were getting ready to shoot in the dunnage, I was actually standing outside. It was a beautiful day and I was standing outside. I don't even remember who I was talking to. I think David someone who worked at Glen Allocky I was talking to. And all of a sudden our producer appeared in the doorway of the warehouse and caught my eye and gave me one of these, like, come here, come here, come here. And I thought, oh no, what happened? Like maybe someone fell or got hurt or knocked over a light or, you know, something bad has happened. And I, and I ran over and I said, what, what, what? He said, you have to try this whiskey. <laughs> and it was, he had, had, you know, Billy had given him a dram of something and he was saving a bit for me and it was, I remember it was the peated cask, that, you know, oh. and, uh, which has now I know been, and it was it was very exciting. It was delicious. 
Yeah, watch the space, watch the space. So yeah, we, we've been, that's another thing that, you know, we've been doing under the, the Glenarchy Distillers Company Limited um, is distilling some uh, some pitted whiskey. So about 20% of the, the, the production is pitted. And uh, that will, yeah, it will come out at some point. Uh, watch the space, but it's it's been it's been good. It's uh, matured very well, and uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be ready quite soon. Well, I, and I imagine you guys. I mean, I think I would know about it if, if I'm maybe I'm wrong, but uh, you haven't released any of the spirit you've distilled since then, Not right? Yet. No, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we would have we would have some three years old at at the moment, but three years is a minimum. It's a minimum legal requirement but you know it, if you can wait a bit longer um yeah. so that it's rounder smoother you, you do that and, and we've got the stock we we're not a new distillery and that again it's a the chance we have we have stock uh we have finance so we've got backbone here we don't have to sell whiskey either work in progress or or the three-year-old or, or so on and there's nothing wrong with that but very often it's because you need the money straight away. We don't, right. so we can wait a bit longer until really the, the whiskey is matured and when it's at its best. So just that's, hitting that's, the sweet point. That's why so many of the new distilleries make gin, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that they don't want to make gin, but gin is, you can sell it a month later and you don't have to wait years and years and years, but you know, that's... Yeah, I, I sometimes I wish we were, I was selling gin is so easy. You want more? Yeah, <laughs> give me a month. <laughs> Whereas now it's like, you want more? No, it's 21 years old. I can't give you more. But why? Well, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Don't have 21 <laughs> years old. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, the, the big difference between whiskey and gin. You're right. It's a, the time. You were talking about what you were drinking. I'm... Uh, I treated myself tonight. I, I thought I would actually pull myself a bit of the 25 years old. Uh, it's one of my, uh, yeah, sweet, sweet spot here, the 25. It's, it's just one of the Glenarchy, which is actually quite soft. Um, and I often compare it to, to an old man. You know, the old man who's <laughs> kind of sat in a corner and unless you go and speak to him and unless you actually make him talk and, and listen, uh, it can be quite quiet. But then when you start mm -hmm. listening of what he's got to say, it's absolutely fantastic. It's so complex. Uh, there's so much going on and it just goes on and on and on and on. So it's one, That's, yeah. I have a tiny bit, I have a little sample of 25 year old at at my place in LA. And when I get back, I will drink it and I will think of that. Yeah, <laughs> and think about the old man. No, mm. but because for me, you know, the 15 years old, for example, 15 years old is a teenager. You know, it's bold, <laughs> it's, it's, it's confident. Uh, you know what you're going to get. I'm Sherry, I'm here, I'm bold and boom, and it's fantastic. Um, the 25 is not, it's not like that. It's a quiet, it's a lot of experience, but I'm not going to boast about it. I know it until yeah. you kind of get it and ask me the question that I want to, I know the answers to. So, um, yeah. That's nice. Um, when, uh, when we were shooting at Gordon McPhail, we, we tasted a dram of the 75 uh, year old Mortlock. Mm -hmm. And uh, people always ask me what it, what, it, what it was like. And I always, I just told this someone yesterday, I said, it, it, it tasted like you were drinking your grandfather's wallet. <laughs> Um, it's just very old leather. It sort of has this great rich leathery smell and kind of uh, Christmas, like yeah. the densest fruitcake you've ever had. And, you know, I, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, but, I remember uh, I had, to, I was one of the luck, lucky one as well to have the, the chance to drink it and well, to taste it. Uh, and it it's fantastic. It's, uh, and it's so fresh again. And that's what I like about, you know, the, the old whiskey which managed to actually remain fresh because you've got a lot of old whiskey which have been far too long in a cask and, and they're too dry, they're too tannic and the only thing you have is wood. So it's not just about age, it's about how it's been matured and how it's been looked after. Yeah, and 
that's nice. Um, you know, uh, we are, I see that we're, I just looked, we're actually over time now, which I, I do every week because I'm a bit of a <laughs> blatherer. But I, I have one more question I want to ask you, which is, I, I, I told you I was going to ask you is, you know, um, at, least in, at least in America, people don't know much yet about McNair's. Yeah. And I and I had some I had some when we were there and I absolutely loved it and uh, I thought it was a great whiskey and I'm eager to and, and I know it is in the U S but it's not it, yeah it's not super widely available yet and I'm hoping that changes soon because I really I thought it was a great dram. Yeah, so Mike Nez is, you see, of, was prepared. <laughs> that's my uh, media <laughs> center. Um, it's actually my bedroom, but uh, don't tell anybody because uh, that's why I go to bed quite early. <laughs> Um, so the McNairs is, is here, this gentleman here, Harvey McNairs, and McNairs is, is a brand that a, we purchased at the same time as a distillery, uh, and it was um, a blended whiskey, and, but we relaunched it as a blended malt. So it's the marriage of four single malts, two Iowa, one Puget Speyside, and Glen Alachy as a backbone. And it gives it a nice, rich and smoky note to it. So you have still have the butterscotch and the, the roundness and the fruitiness of the Glanarchy, uh, but you have the smokiness underlying, underlying uh, well, under, underneath. And we've got, at the moment, we have three different ones. We have a non-age statement, we have a 12 years old, and we have a 21 years old. Um, all really nice, depends how much peat you like in your whiskey. Uh, I like a subtle peat. So for me, the 21 year old is fantastic because the peat has been tamed and is just in the background. If, if you're more of a peat fanatic, uh, the non-age statement is baboom, that's it. Uh, and the 12 is right, right balance between the fruitiness and the smokiness. So they all really nice, um, won a lot of awards, but it's, it's, yeah, it's maybe a bit more difficult to, you know, to, to get into the market than Glenarchy. Yeah, I think, I, I think the market that you tell, you'll know a million times better than I will, but in my, in my experience or what I'm witnessing, I feel like the market for, for blended malts has really kind of started to open up here anyway, that people are starting to understand what they are. Um, I had a conversation yeah. earlier today about it. It's been a long road, though. Um, I mean, again, you know, I remember 10 years ago and, and the only blended malt, well, maybe not, not only, but the, the one that made a bit of noise and, and so on, uh, apart from the monkey shoulder, but nobody really knew it was a blended malt, but it was Compass Box. And Compass Box was the one yeah. where always, you know, talking about it and explaining at fairs, at shows, what it was. and But... Even with all this work going in the background, people, as soon as you say the word blended, they look at you and say, I don't do blend. And you're like, no, but I'm not talking blended whiskey. And, and even there's some fantastic blended whiskey. I'm talking blended malt. No, no, I told you I don't do blend. And it, it's, I, I thought it was much easier to talk about vatic malt. Uh, yeah. But until... <laughs> You know, the, the SWA decided to change the term um, from vatted malt to blended malt. So, so now we have to use the word blended malt. So that's what's on the label. But I know that when I explain to people, I, I quite quickly revert to, to vatted malt because I think it explains it. It's, 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 it's easy to understand vatted malt, but blended, it just puts a stop to every everybody just kind of close and say, no, no blend. Um, and again, yeah, I suppose it's our fault as well, because for years, you know, the Scotch whiskey industry, the, the single malt industry anyway, kept on saying, if you have to drink one thing, drink the single malt. That's so, true, yeah. They, <laughs> you know, um, there's a, a movie, it's a, one of my all-time favorite movies called Ruben Ruben from the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, starring uh, Tom Conti, he's a Scottish poet. And there's a line in that movie where he's talking about how the names of things mean so much. And he talked about how much people will spend thousands of dollars to have um, chickweed removed from their yards. But if, if chickweed were called the eyes of Mary, they would spend thousands of dollars to have it put into their yards, but it could be yeah. the same plants. <laughs> 
And I always, I always think of that. And uh, you just reminded me of that with the, uh, the blended mold. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talking about actually meanings, we didn't say, but um, I mean, I know you know, and a lot of people listening tonight would, would know, but uh, Glenalachy means in, in Gaelic means the Valley of the Rocks. Um, so this is this is really why as well we chose this font onto on the bottles. Uh, it's got nothing to do with Flintstones or, or Jurassic Park. It's, <laughs> it's the Valley of the Rock. Um, yeah, it's uh, I did I. I what does, I, I don't remember what Craig means, because I always, I know people mix it up with Craig Alecky. Um, but Craig I, is, a, is a small, oh, that's where you see I'm not Scottish, but I think it's it Craig a is like a, a, um, a, a bit of lots of stones together, <laughs> but I might okay. be wrong. That's, that's when it then I be, need yeah. to go and ask my, my, my husband. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think Craig is a pile of stone rather than, than a hill or a valley. Yeah, well, in either case, um, it's, uh, I, it's, it's amazing to me how much the uh, Glenallachie has taken the world by storm, the whiskey world by storm, you know, and uh, it's uh, well-deserved, you know, it's, it's such a great whiskey and, and I love it. And, you know, it's funny, I, I, you may know this, I don't know, um, David, we, we only shot at Glenallachie in the film because David reached out to us while we were shooting the film because we hadn't been able to get a hold. Like we just didn't even know how to get a hold of anyone there because it, it had just reopened. And, and and then David heard about us and reached out to us and we we changed our schedule to come. We were so excited to uh, to get to spend a couple hours with Billy. So yeah, no, it's um, good. And, and but we're super glad we did. I, I think your film is brilliant. I uh, I watched it. Uh, the launch so uh, in in February, uh, really really good. And again, it shows, you know, what whiskey is really about. And and whiskey is about people for me, um, people who actually make fantastic drink. But it's about people. It's about the people who make it. It's about the people that you drink it with. It's about all the relationship. Um, and, and you show that very very well in in the film. Thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's been so it's been lovely talking to you and I, yeah, I really likewise. appreciate your Friday evening I know it's it's late there and I appreciate me you letting me punch a hole in your Friday evening <laughs> uh, not a problem not a problem as I said you know for once I've got somebody listening to me because I've been stuck with my husband for a year so uh, <laughs> it's uh, I mean it's hard for me but I think it's even harder for him because I used to travel all the time and now I'm stuck here so he's got to put up with me yeah um, I, same here, but uh, I think my my wife, we she's I can hear her. She's actually one room over on her own Zoom right now. Uh, she's still working. She she works LA hours now. She's working remotely, so she's right. still at work. But I will let you go enjoy the rest of your Friday evening. Well, no, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me and and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about Glenarchy. But uh, you you say we've made a lot of noise. we you know going places yeah and i just wanted to add this is just the beginning believe me uh we're, we're going to uh yeah get well get as a there. fan i'm <laughs> along i'm along for that ride so <laughs> good good well thank you very much thank you. have a nice Slanjava. evening bye-bye bye thanks